Hello, hello. We are excited to see everybody here. We'll be getting started um, right on time at one o'clock. Welcome, welcome. Feel free to drop in the chat where you are um, joining us from. Mark, how's it going, man? Good. Uh, I'm trying to start the video and it's not letting me. No worries. Let me see if I can give you a little assist. Hey, Tam. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Can you see me? I just see my name. Just your name so far. Huh. Okay. Mark G. Hello, Tammy. How are you? Good. Good. Oh, there we go. Now we can see you. My man. Okay, I can't. We gotta see you, Tim. Do you see me? No, no. Okay, let me. Where are settings here? Mark, I tried to dress up today, man, because I know you were going to be snazzy, so. <laughs> I already had one shoot this morning. I got two more after this. My man. Excellent. How's everybody doing? Well, not complain, man. Yeah. How All good you? here. Doing well. I mean, still busy. Everything that you're reading in the media, I am definitely not following with my workload. Yeah, you know how the media can be. <laughs> hey, we're going to be in um, in Chicago. I, I saw that. Next yeah, is man. it next weekend? Weekend after Fourth of July. Yeah, the weekend. After or, yeah. Fourth. So the seventh, seventh through the eleventh. All right. Cool. We'll have to maybe get dinner or something. So. Yeah, man. And anybody in here, if you're um, in the Chicagoland area, we're doing a, um, a meetup. So drop your information in the chat and uh, we'll make sure you get an invite. Da, da, da. Let's see, where's the chat? Oh, wow, we got uh, Poland, Memphis, Tennessee, Vancouver, British Columbia, Monterey, Peoria, New York. We're rocking from all over the world. We still can't see Tammy, but you know, we're excited. <laughs> right, sorry. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying to see where my settings are. It's all good. And we have just a couple of minutes, so I think we'll be um, ready to rock by that time. And um, just while we're waiting, tomorrow is National Camera Day. So everybody make sure you take a picture <laughs> with your camera. Tag Kubi Casa. We're gonna, you know, have some fun with it. But you know, we're camera people, so we might as well enjoy our day, right? Heck yeah. Let me see, Tammy, if I can let's see. You have been busy. Yeah, man. Always uh, some cool things happening. So we're always excited and, um, you know, just trying to keep things moving and 
growing and, you know, great and exciting. There she is. Success. I was going to wear my hair just like that, Tammy. <laughs> Here's the wig. You can wear you it know. today. <laughs> Some days I wish. I Oh, yeah. I saw a really cute, like, kind of a shaved haircut the other day, and it's been hot here. And uh, it made me think. Me. You can yes. come to this okay. side. It's good. <laughs> you never know what I'm going to do. That's the thing. So one of these days. All right. And we, uh, we see you, Don. Thanks for your information. Um, we will definitely include you in our invite. Um, look forward to connecting and hanging out. So we won't waste any time. Um, we're excited to have Mark Gutierrez with us. Um, he is a photographer with Epic Homes, but he also works with VHT, uh, does a lot of amazing work. And he is also an educator. So he spends a lot of his time making sure that other photographers in this um, you know, realm of photography are educated, have the information they need to grow their business and do incredible things. So Tim and I are super excited. We had a great conversation with Mark out in Vegas at PFRE last year and excited to carry that conversation um, with all of you online. Um, and there's, there's so much going on in the world and, you know, there's a lot of pieces and parts, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, the interest rates and the market slowing down and all of these things. So we're going to tackle the business side of photography and hopefully uh, give you some ideas to spur some growth and consistency to really um, help you. So um, with that being said, first of all, again, I dressed up because Mark was dressed up. Mark <laughs> is always dressed up for his shoots. He's always wearing a cool vest. Um, so as the best dressed real estate photographer I know, how does that play a part into um, to your brand, what you do? how you do it and why you do it. First, uh, well, thank you. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for uh, giving me a platform so I can continue with my crusade to raise the bar and uh, fight, the, fight the race to the bottom. Um, it's really funny. Uh, I dressed like every other photographer, khakis and a polo, khakis and, you know, a nice shirt. And then one day out of the blue, I just said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I feel like dressing up. And it was immediate like that specific day, I can think of the day I was treated differently, you know, mm -hmm. same photographer, same equipment, same camera. I just noticed that agents questioned me less. They questioned, Hey, you know, how about this angle? How about that angle? Homeowners, 90% of the time will comment on my dress. Uh, <laughs> they also are taken back, taken aback. They're like, wow, this guy must be good. Same guy, you know, uh, same photographer, same angle, same images. It's just yeah. a perceived value. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, when, and when speaking, like, uh, like Mark said, I, I work for VHT. I only shoot for VHT, even though I have a branding of Epic Homes. I went back to my, my fellow photographers at VHT, and I explained to them, listen, I'm not telling you how to dress. And if somebody were to come in to an office meeting, and I'm sitting on, this side, on your side of the table, and they said, hey, you need to dress better, my initial response, my stubborn response would have been listen you can't tell me how to dress you don't yeah. pay me enough to tell me how to dress mm -hmm. i don't i'm not telling you how to dress i'm just sharing my experience my experience is it's a perceived value mm -hmm. you know no nothing more nothing less than that you know uh but it's been very helpful i've been doing it now for about five years and it, i still get the same responses um, from homeowners daily yeah and that's, that's where know. that comes from I, it's it's going to make you more memorable. I mean, you you definitely now you stand out, and they're not going to forget you. And and that types taps into another avenue of what I talk about. Now, what I talk about mainly is I, I can talk about compositions. I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I shoot a lot of really nice properties. I live in a really nice uh, in a community with some really nice houses. But I, you know, there's many, many, many very talented, very educated photographers that could teach you way more about editing and lighting and, uh, and that type of stuff. Uh, I'm going to teach you a little bit more my insight on business, customer relations, things like that. So, you know, that's kind of where I go with it. And when you talk about how this is kind of like an identity for me, it's, it's also separation. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many, for VHT alone, we have 100 photographers in the Chicagoland area, just VHT. And we have some amazingly talented 
uh, competitors that I'm friends with, you know, and that's on top of our photographers. So whatever we can do to bring value and create separation in whatever market you're in, you know, uh, not only do it for yourself, but help your agents do the same thing. That helps you create value. It helps raise the bar. It helps, you know, fight that, that battle to the bottom that we're all seeing in every market. A lot of what I talk about pertains to photographers, but actually pertains as, as strongly or equal to agents. So I do a lot of office visits. I was in one yesterday explaining to them what my value is and what my goal is with this. So while you're on that note, you know, because this is one of the things we talked about, um, talk about the importance of pivoting to build those longer lasting relationships with agents. And what are some of the things that you've done? What are some of the, um, the taxes, tactics that you've taken so that uh, you build that longevity and that you have something um, that gives that, you know, so that's, you know, we talked about perceived value with how you dress, but now translate, you know, how we can actually give for real value in some of the services you offer. I've got a funny story. I, uh, about three months before the pandemic, both Vince, the, the COO of our company and myself, we go on this long rant on the Facebook pages about how we will never do 3D tours. It's not photography. <laughs> it's not <laughs> quality. It's a waste of my time. It's a waste of my talent. And then boom, pandemic hits. And uh, needless to say, within six months, we're back on those pages eating, eating crow. Uh, because what was happening was some of our competitors were offering 3D tours, floor plans. And what was happening, they were doing it at such a discounted price. And, but the photography just wasn't, it wasn't at our level. Uh, so what they were doing is they were doing the 3D scans and they were extracting images from that and they were giving that to the clients as free, 100 free images, but it really wasn't quality photography. So what was happening in my market was my good agents, they would hire that company to do that, they would throw the images out and they would hire me to do the images. And it just rubbed me the wrong way to have, you know, the competitor in the door, because if the pandemic got worse and the budgets got tighter, I was afraid that they were going to say, well, you're going to have to use the images you know, that they supply and will put you on hold. Mm -hmm. So for me, the way I we pivoted besides having to eat, eat crow was we started doing 3D tours and, uh, and floor plans also. Uh, Cuba Casa was a godsend for us because uh, VHT started doing floor plans about six, seven years ago by hand. And I was one of the first people we trained because I have a drafting background, but it was just not, it was not efficient for us to do them for me to do them personally, because I was doing so much photography that for me to, to carve out time to do that, it just wasn't efficient. So I never did floor plans until QB Casa came along. Uh, during the pandemic, we really got on board and uh, now it's 60% of what I do has some service attached to it, whether it's 3D or floor plan. And that being said, during the pan early parts of the pandemic, it was within that grouping, it was 60% 3D tour, 40% floor plan. And now that's pretty much flipped. I would say it's 65% floor plan and 35 uh, or 30%, whatever, uh, uh, 3D tour. It, it, it goes up and down, you know, it's more driven by agents. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. But then what we're also seeing, you know, as I've helped educate a lot of my agents, they're using those tools as separators also, mm -hmm. you know, they, they don't like 3D tours. I mean, and I'm not saying anything against it. They just, it doesn't have the same quality of the images we're putting together. Uh, sometimes they find their clients uh, struggle with the manipulating of it. Um, they don't necessarily, but they'll say I'll order on every one of my, my listings because it's a separator between me and the other agents yeah. and they pay for it. Yes. So, so, so let's talk about that a minute, because I think that's an important piece. And that's something that many photographers may miss on is the fact that it's not just our job to go and take pictures, but how can we help our agents, our realtors really pull on that brand and separate themselves? Because then that adds again, value to what we provide them. Yes. And, and I've talked to you, uh, both of you about this before. And uh, my goal over the last year and a half, two years, as I've seen, you know, I keep saying this race to the bottom. I've also seen an 
you know, when houses were selling so quick, the agents were cutting a lot of corners, sometimes not even taking photos because they knew it was going to sell in a day or two, you know? So it's, it's, um, my, my goal and my mindset has been, how can I bring value as a photographer and an educator, but mainly as a photographer to help those agents justify full commission? You know, what is it that I can do? What is it that I can bring? How is it? Can I present myself? And these are all little things that I do so that when they go in and they say, you know, yes, we know somebody else will do this for 3% or 4%. I've charged full commission. And this is why this is my photographer. This is my, this is who, you know, I'll help take care of this. I'll help take care of that. I, I market this way. Look at my social media. My social media utilizes a lot of these images we take. You know, and that cost, this all cost, but this is the value I bring. And and that's where that's what the, has helped been a driver for me to always look at other things I can pivot to bring more value to my agents because when they're making full commission, they will turn around and be able to afford the services and the quality that I provide. So I'm it's a selfish reason. I want to be able to be doing this in five years, you know, and if we continue with all with that discount brokerage and discount values we're all going to be doing this for a half and a third of what we're actually making today. I agree. And I think it's so important. One of the things I enforce with or reinforce with a lot of my um, realtors, real estate agents is the fact that I want to be part of your team. So right. when I produce great work for you, you're putting that into your marketing materials. And no matter what the market is, when you're producing good work, they're going to see that and know that, hey, no matter if my house is a $150,000 house or a $1.5 million house, you're going to take great care of it. And I think that really, really matters. And, and again, this is a differentiator. Right. Yeah. I, I kind of reworded it a little bit with my agents. Like, listen, there's a million photographers out there, you know, and quite honestly, half a million take decent pictures, you know, but I don't want you to view me simply as your photographer. Because when you just look at it like that, just your photographer, if you can't make an appointment, they'll go to the next guy or yeah. they're not, they, they're not as accommodating or they're not even talking you up to their home on, which makes the process easier. Once you get in the door, mm -hmm. I tell them, I want to be known as your visual branding partner. So, you know, I'm going to give you images for, to help you sell this house. But quite honestly, I want to give you images and give you a, give you some, some tools to get the next five listings. There you go. So that you know that's let's not look at it for just this house so when you mm -hmm. cut corners when you cut corners it doesn't just affect you on this house you may just sell this house anyway it doesn't really matter but it may hurt you when somebody looks at your website and they're thinking of the ne the agent on the next five listings yeah so these are the conversations i have with my agents daily uh, especially new agents my business is basically 80, 80, 80, 85 percent of agents I've been working with for a long period of time, but I always leave space 15, 20 percent a year where I'm trying to educate and bring on a new agent that someday wants to be one of those top agents. They understand the value of quality. They understand the value of consistency. They understand all that stuff. They may only get three, three listings this year, but they mm -hmm. may get six next year and they may get 10 the following year. And who knows? One of them might be that breakout agent that ends up getting 40 listings. Yeah. But they're going to be built on a foundation of quality and consistency. So that's really how yeah. I, I kind of work it. Yeah, I think you just created a bunch of uh, visual branding partners out here. I know Alicia <laughs> loved it. And, <laughs> which is, But again, it's, it's great. And I think that those things are differentiators that help us to separate ourselves from um, a lot of the other photographers in the market. Because like I said, somebody got a, um, a camera for Christmas or their birthday and they just became, you know, <laughs> one of our competitors. So it's really cool to, um, to have those things that really help push us aside and, and push us into that next level. Yeah. Um, so Mark, what are, I want to make sure that we give some practical things too. And actually you've already given a ton of things, but, um, what are some of the top things that photographers can do today to enhance their business? Really? I think, um, one of the, one of the pivots I've made recent, I would say in the last year or so, is I used to try to be like everything to everybody. You know, I would try to get as many listings as I could, uh, photo shoots as I could. And then what ended up happening was, is I was so busy that um, my really good agents sometimes would suffer with that. 
because I couldn't get to them in a timely fashion. I wasn't flexible enough because my schedule was so full with people that just loved my work, but weren't necessarily consistently loving my work. Mm -hmm. So I've really kind of pivoted where now I, I'm a little more selective and I'll work with anybody once or twice or three times. But if we see we're not, we're not on the same page, they're not ready, they cancel a lot. You know, I kind of move on and, and kind of direct them to a different photographer because it just doesn't fit in my business model. I, I really am big on trying to build partnerships. That visual branding partner is more than just the word. It's really like, you know, I really want to be somebody that if we can't pick a time, you're going to wait until we can get a time, whether it's because of the homeowner or whether it's because of me, my schedule, but you don't really have another option to go someplace else in your mind. That's the kind of mindset that I've really been pushing. And I think at all demographics and all price points, I think that's kind of really important for longevity in your business. Agreed. And um, just to do a brief reset of the room, we're gonna um, hold questions to the end, but if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or the Q and A and we'll make sure that we get to them. Um, but just to back up, I think what you said, Mark, is so important and it's a hard thing to do, right? It's, you know, letting go and saying, hey, this may not be a good fit for me and my business and the brand that I'm building, but you, you can't have everybody. You know, there's, there's that limit where you have to have what's really great for you instead of maybe what might be good. And it's the old saying, um, not all money is good money. Um, right. So to be able to let go of some of the things that, um, like you said, people who constantly reschedule or people that, I mean, there are just some people that just don't fit. And right. it's hard to let go when you're trying to put, you know, food on the table and all of that. But sometimes by holding on to those people, we're not really um, getting to the people that can be longtime partners. And I, I love the use of that word partner because, you know, like you said, when it comes out to that shoot, I would rather them wait to schedule me than just say, oh, well, let me just go to Susie or Joe or Bob down the street. Right, 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 right. So I think that's that's critical. You, you one of the two things I want to touch on with that is I'm a huge, you know, I'm not the most organized guy, but I track I track a lot of data. Mm -hmm. I track every shoot. I track the resultants. I track how many images I've taken for them, how many they accept. I track all that stuff. So, and I do that because one of the reasons I do that is because what you said. I, I re reiterate to everybody I mentor or teach or talk to, it's a very difficult thing to modify your business model and cut any business as an independent contractor. It's one of the toughest things. I don't care where you are. I don't care what modifications you're making to your process to turn away five listings this month is a tough thing to do. And I'm 10 years in, I'm pretty stable in my, in my, in my work. But every time I make a pivot, every time I change my work style, one, and it's going to cost me some business short term, but it always ends up making sense long term because I understand the data. I understand, mm -hmm. hey, this agent, you know, the last four times I shot for them, they reassigned. And, and, and when they reassigned, that's a spot that I could have used for somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or I could have picked up a new agent or, you know, I had to push my good agents out or my, my long term agent. I shouldn't say good. My long term agents out an extra day or two, you know, so I track all that stuff. I really study it. And so when I make a decision, it's not, it's not a gut reaction. It's usually very analytical of what, how it's going to affect my process. So that that's because it's so hard. I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you're a first year photographer going into your second year. I don't care if you're a 10th year photographer going into your 11th year. It's a very difficult proposition to ever cut any. But what I will say is when I started with VHT, my goal was to be the busiest photographer we have out of 800, <laughs> 900 photographers in the country. And I reached that goal. I was shooting 1,550 houses a year. I did that three years in a row. Now I'll do probably around 950 this year. And my income is three times what it was when I was doing 1,500. Be you know, and it's not a one jump, one step. It's an evolution of different modifications, taking on different services, cutting different agents, all these different things. It's a slow, it's a process, but it's a process worth worth really understanding. Mm -hmm. And is so one of the things that was intriguing about what you said is you know the tracking of your statistics. Do you also track like um, the homes that are sold that you shot for so that you can like put up some fancy statistics like over eight million dollars in homes sold or anything like that? 
I don't. I wish I did. I, I mean, the only thing I come close to is I know that since I've been doing this with VHT, I'm somewhere around 12,000 houses. That's about it. But, uh, awesome. but the revenue generated, I, I never really have tracked it. And, and I shoot a lot of big houses. And quite honestly, I shoot a lot of small houses too. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the deceiving thing. If you listen to me talk, if you listen to me talk about how my business, I have agents that'll never, that'll never sell or rarely sell anything over 300,000, which in some parts of the country is huge. In our part of the country, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty mediocre or lower level, you know, I mean, some, so hundred thousand dollar, you know, condos or teardowns, but the one thing that's consistent is they only use me. They only do a certain level package and, you know, it's just very consistent. And I, and the other thing is, is when I started to cut back on who I work with and become more selective, that means that if they get their grandmother's house an hour and a half away and it's only 10 images and I'm not going to make very much money, they know I'll do it. Mm -hmm. because there's a there's a partnership there my partnership doesn't stop you know 45 minutes away my partnership is we've got to we've got to tackle these issues no matter what yeah awesome. just it Tammy, you have anything to add in the meantime well i yes i do i just wanted to ask because i'm sure that we have some um some newer photographers on or newer real estate photographers so would you mind mark talking a little bit about when you were in the beginning, when you were just getting started out, did you start out with BHT? Did you start out on your own? How did you find your first agents that you started working with? Kind of what was, and it may be different now because that's, you've been doing it for a while, but just some ideas there if we have some newer people. Sure. I did, uh, I came out of school photography, which was barely photography, um, but it was my first forte in the quote unquote professional photography. And I just answered an ad uh, through VHT and that's where I started. And uh, it's kind of an inside joke here. And I use it in my teaching tools is uh, I, use, I show when we start a, a workshop, I, uh, the first thing they'll see are my test photos and they are brutal. I can't believe that I was hired. Nothing straight, <laughs> nothing makes sense. The colors all over the place. My my fiance loves it. She works for VHT also. She laughs so hard, louder than anybody in the room. Uh, but you know what? Just to tell anybody there that if you, if you're not at least this good, you know, and everybody is, everybody's much better. We have a better understanding of what's expected. We have, you know, the, the the Facebook pages. We have a lot of different information out there that there's nobody that should be walking into a house shooting what I the way I did ten years ago when I first went in. So that was the evolution and, and VHT. You know, not to be a big commercial for VHT, but it, it it's a great opportunity um, if it's in your market and you want to use it to 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 kind of get your foot in the door. It's something to really look into. It, it works if it works for you and your style of photography, uh, and but it it allows you to build your business underneath their umbrella. Mm -hmm. I just dropped the link in the chat if anyone is um, interested, and if you. Um, I do have questions. I'm going to put up a slide at the end that has Mark's contact information, but um, he'll happily answer any questions about BHT and his experience. Um, you know, when we were out at PFRE, there was a huge contingency of BHT, and it was really impressive to see not only, you know, because the reality is they're in, some of them are in the same market, so they're competitors, but the camaraderie between them was absolutely amazing. So, um, I think it's, they have something really good going on there and definitely go answer the questions. When I do workshops about one of the workshops I do it locally um, at, the, at a camera store. Now this isn't necessarily uh, to only VHT people or agents. It's photographers that are looking to possibly get into real estate photography. I break it down into three sections. My, 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 my uh, presentation is VHT is one way to get in this industry. You know, we go in, we don't, we don't, you know, we just shoot, we don't edit, we don't collect payment. We don't, there's all these things we don't do. We make less per house than other avenues to get in the industry. Understand that, but we can also do seven, eight, nine houses in a day. So if you only want to shoot and you're one of those photographers that can relinquish the editing process, not everybody can, uh, and be okay with that 
this is one avenue. The second avenue is more of a regional type of real estate photography company where they may be only in our Chicagoland market, only in Detroit market, only in that market. They may have a dozen photographers, maybe eight, six photographers. You're seeing that to be the bigger trend. If you look at the pages, everybody's trying to figure out how do I, how do I build a team? How do I build a company? Um, and they're using a lot of the same models we are. They're outsourcing their editing. They're doing these things. They're outsourcing their admin. They're doing the same things we do on a grand scale. You'll make probably a little better money per house, but you may not have the ability to do as many houses because you may have to do some other steps. Mm -hmm. So that's a second avenue. Now, the third avenue is you're an independent guy. You're going to go in there. You're going to collect whatever you charge. You're going to control everything, every part of the process. You will make more money per house but it's, you're gonna be focusing your attention on other types of things and other types of administrative things, growing your business, marketing, all that type of stuff. And I tell them there's a fit for all three. It's whatever you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable relinquishing your editing, you'll hate VHT. If you're not comfortable, you know, because some, some photographers are not, they're just, it just, it's a very difficult thing for them to see their work and it's not edited the way they wanted it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, you got the if, if you if you want to be busy and you don't want to be doing admin work, then you know what VHT might be better for you. I'm, I, when I do my workshops, it's it's really to kind of educate people on the different avenues to get into the industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that was a great summary and um, a great way to give people a view into those options because um, I think there are a lot of people who struggle trying to do it their own, you know, their own way or on their own when they can jump into something like VHT and really push themselves ahead. So thanks for sharing that. It's pretty awesome. You could. Yeah. And I, um, as I'm welcoming new photographers into the Kubikasa certified photographer program, um, when I'm looking at websites, I mean, I definitely, I see a range. So the, and it just, it depends what you want to do. Just like you said, if all you want to do is shoot, then find someone to work for. You can be out shooting all day and not have to edit at all. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of finding what you want to do and what mm -hmm. your skills are. And like, I know Mark does pretty much everything. Well, both Marks. Um, <laughs> Mark S does drone, does going to be adding video, stills, you know, floor plans. Um, so I'm, I'm curious about... What are your feelings about um, either going really deep into one thing and being a super expert or being a, more a jack of all trades and being able to do everything? That's tough. I mean, it's, it's, I think it, it depends on one thing that I think it depends on your market. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in a high end market that you can go in there and command a good revenue to just do a specific item, just like photography. I think there's certain markets that lend itself to that a little better. Mm -hmm. You know, LA probably is a lot more lucrative to do just that than can, you know, some rural part of Kansas city, you know, outside of Kansas city, you know, hundred miles outside. Um, I think, I think in all of them, you can probably carve out a niche either way. It's a matter of how much of a niche do you want to carve? You know, do you, are you content? Are you content with just doing this? I do think the trend is getting away from being specific, whether it's just a drone operator or just a photographer. I think it's hard to keep agents really sold on that. And that's why I picked up the services. As much as the agents love me and as much as I know that I'm a very good photographer, I think it just becomes a business model and efficiency model for them. You know, mm -hmm. there's going to be a good photographer that's going to come along that can do drone and can do floor plans and can do these things. And then how valuable am I? How much are they really giving up by going with them? So that's one of the reasons why I started picking up those services too. Uh, I don't want to be discouraging to anybody that, that you know, that, that only wants to do one or the other, but if you're, if you've got a great process for drone and you can hook on with a bunch of photographers, you know, stick with what, you know, but then you have to build a business that way. You have to look at your data. You have to do good marketing. You better bring a professional brand. I mean, it's not a matter of do this or do that. What do you bring to the table underneath those umbrellas? Mm -hmm. you 
right? Somebody could, be, you know, somebody could be really successful because they're very professional, they're consistent, they do great quality, they're easy to work with. So they can make it work. But the next guy that wants to dabble and that's all he wants to do, or, you know, he's not very consistent and he's hard, difficult to deal with, he may not succeed. It's not a matter of one or the other. It's not a matter of being a drone operator is successful or not. It's really individual. And that's the same thing. That's the same. That's one of the things that drove me into my workshop of explaining the three avenues to get into real estate photography. Because at the time when I started doing that about six, seven years ago, there was a big wave of people that were getting into real estate photography and then getting out so quickly because they said, I can't make a living doing this. But they didn't understand. They move into a market like Chicago. They don't understand that VHT is so entrenched. And then they try to compete with us in price. But you just can't do it. And you know, I talked to local guys. You know, I met a couple of local guys here in my town. Great photographers. And they're trying to compete with us in price. They're doing okay. But then he asks me, we're at a meetup. And he asked me, he goes, I'm doing 10 jobs a week. And I, I got no sleep at night because I'm editing and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I'm like, because you're not charging enough. Mm -hmm. If you charged more, your quality is great, you know. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll probably lose a lot of your clients because the reason you got them is because you undercut us, right? but you may build a business built on quality and consistency, but you need to understand it. Basically, I'm not telling you to change your business model. I just, you need to understand what your competition and what the other avenues are doing. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going in as an independent, you can go in there and you can sell yourself on individual service and things like that, that, that will help you, but you better understand it. You better understand what you're, what you're walking into. Yeah. And you, you definitely need to understand your costs because, you know, as an, as an individual, you don't have the efficiencies that VHT has. So you may get the business, but in the end, um, it may be hurt. You, you may be hurting yourself and, and also just driving things down in general. So yeah. one of the things that I read um, recently is one of the most valuable, but underestimated elements is time. You know, we know how to factor in the cost of goods sold. We know how to, you know, factor in how much this costs and how much that costs. But many times we fail to include how much our time is. And that is such a huge factor that when, um, when not addressed, like you said to the guy that was talking, you know, if, if you're losing sleep and you're not, you know, eating well and all of those other things and, you know, but you're, booked and busy it's like yeah but your health is crap and you don't have a family and you know nobody wants to talk to you that's not a good you know solution right. either right yeah. yeah so um mark how do you handle objections and and how do you deal with that and and you may not deal with a lot of it now because you're pretty established but if you could go back in time you know how did you how did and do you deal with um, objections or you know i don't need this service i don't need that or you know, why professional or, you know, anything in those, in that area? The, the, the best way, the, re, the way I really break down a lot of the objections within agents, whether it's why are you so expensive? Why are you, you know, uh, why won't you do my cheap job, my, my, my less expensive jobs? My, my, why don't you shoot this? Because I, the, we have different packages at VHT and I don't shoot a, a, the bottom level package, the lower level package. And then I do shoot the middle and upper. And, and then you'll start getting questions on that. I easily, I have uh, something I put together that's, I think it's like 18 bullet points of the comparisons between an independent photographer and an agent. We, our industries parallel one another. And that's what I explained to them. I just talked about it yesterday in the office. I'm like, when you're a brand new agent, you're sitting in other people's open houses for 75 bucks a day. You're doing all these things that a 10 year agent doesn't even sit their own open houses. We're in the same trajectory. You know, what I did my first year of being a photographer is what I'm doing today. Now, if you, it's not what I'm doing today, I'm saying I've, I've advanced. You know, it's the same thing as most of you realtors. They start to understand that. Uh, the other thing is, if you're asking me, yes, my, my competitor can do it for half the price. I always turn it around to them and say, yeah, I know. And you know what? That homeowner can get a discount broker that'll do it for 2%. Are they bringing the same value you are? It's simple. And I'm not saying it to be, you know, disrespectful. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to let you know that our industries parallel one another. That person, I, and I tell them, I know you're bringing a much better value than that person is. Mm -hmm. When they can see it that way, 
it takes them, it, it puts the, the playing field a little more even. It helps them understand it a little better. So there's always comparisons between us and them. Any argument they have, you can almost always turn it around and say, but that same thing, you are the homeowner. To, you know, you're my homeowner. So all those arguments that you're talking about, that homeowner is thinking the same thing about you and your, your commission. So. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think I get a lot of respect from agents because then they look at me a little differently when I, when, and some, some like, oh, this guy's a jerk. I'm going to go work for somebody else. So, <laughs> and I just, you know, I dodged a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it goes back to, you know, not everybody is your ideal client. No, you know? not all, not all money is good money. <laughs> so, you know, as Tammy mentioned, I'm, you know, I know that we have some um, new photographers in the group, some people who are listening today that are maybe just getting started or thinking about getting started. What are one or two pieces of advice that you would give to somebody that is just brand new to the industry or somebody who's been in it for a while that just desperately needs a refresh? Um, I do some mentoring and teaching photography to VHD people. And one of the things that I instill on day one is if you can remember three things with every image you take, you're halfway there. You're halfway to being at my level. It's amenities, whatever the amenity in the house, anything that that builder or that homeowner put into money that brings value to the house, crown molding, fireplaces, bay windows, make sure you capture those nice light fixtures, nice kitchens, good tile, make sure you capture those in a way that they're really, that they really represent the house well. Flow. I'm a huge one on flow. I'm not saying only flow shots, but to me, what I mean by flow is you want to see where the laundry room is off the hallway on what floor, you know, you don't want to go in there and show the laundry room and show the powder rooms like, well, how does this lay out? think that has a little less bearing now with all the cubicasas that I'm doing, but <laughs> uh, people like to see that though, flow. And then solid compositions, straight lines, make sure there's not something in the foreground that shouldn't be. Make sure that, you know, you got the rugs up and the toilet seat down and it's just good composition. Amenities, flow and composition. If you get those three things down in every shot you take, you're halfway there. Now, now you start to create your own style or you start to create all these things. But that all being said, all of that in a great photographer, that's about 40% of your value. The 60% of your value is your professionalism, your, your, your consistency, you know, the value you're bringing to your agents, being cons- you know, interested in what they're doing. That's to me, is the real separator between photographers you know, across the board, whether it's all of our group of photographers at VHT or all of our, me, me and my competitors, that's the real separator. Because we can, a lot of us can take pretty pictures. I mean, let's face it. Can we do it consistently? Look at your photo shoots as a complete tour. Don't look at your photo shoot. Oh man, I got these three great shots on this tour. Yeah, but you know what? You know, your kitchen and your bathroom are terrible. It's a complete tour. Look at everything as a complete tour. I mean, I say that because I get back my early tours. I'd look at them like, ah, and I missed it in that room. I missed it in that room. So it's you always look at it as a complete tour. You know, you're not selling rooms. You're selling a house. Mm-hmm. So those are some basic things that I try to tell new people. One quick thing um, that I would love for you to address when you're in a house and, you know, let's say you're shooting this room and to get the angle that you want, there's this big chair sitting in the way. What do you do? It's probably not the best thing to recommend. I move furniture like crazy. I move furniture, you know, uh, I've been known to take doors off because I don't like the way they swing. Uh, yeah, I, I don't do that stuff regularly, but that's usually for like a really good agent. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I climbed out of a window and was standing on a roof because I really like the view of the pool. And <laughs> again, this is not this is not anything I'm recommending <laughs> anybody. But I mean, you can do smaller things. Uh, you know, you have the chair issue, but like small stuff. You know, rugs in the bathroom, things like that, things that are going to make the eyes, make the space look smaller. Just kind of think about your compositions. And if you don't want to do it, then you know what? Make sure that you have a good partnership with your agents and say, listen, we want this moved. We want that moved. We want this moved. You know, if we move this chair, look, you know, look how you can, what I used to do early on, if I had to kind of convince an agent that I knew what I was talking about is I would take a quick shot and with the chair on the way. And then I would have them move the chair. Or I would move the chair and I would take the shot again. And it was a way to educate them that, 
I know what I'm talking about because you do that once or twice. Then the third time you go into a house, they're like, just do what, what you need to do because it makes sense. So it's always, you know, I'm really huge on communicating with my agents on why I'm doing things and yeah. educating them. What I used to do, what I do a lot when I have a very brand new agent that this is their very first photo shoot that they're on. I have them walk through with me and I explain to them, I explain to them, okay, we're taking this angle and this is why. Yeah. And, and they may find that to be kind of a drain, but I explained to them, listen, you need to understand this, especially because you're new. Once you get these pictures back, I'm not going to be with you. And that homeowner, if that's a strong-minded homeowner, they're going to be questioning things. You want to be, you want to seem like you're educated on why this is done. Yeah. So, you know, it also, it also helps me because the next time I shoot with them, they also know how to prep a house a little more. Yeah. So that I don't have to do that when I get there. And those are two key things that you said, um, the communication piece. Um, and I think that goes so far in so many different ways, not just in the prep of the home, but just overall, when they know that you're vested in, in their growth and their process, it changes the whole dynamic of the relationship. And again, moves you far closer to being a partner. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, just walking them through and explaining the why you're doing things because, you know, people are buying the house, not the furniture. So, right. you know, if it looks better to move something, it's valuable to move that for, you know, composition's sake to make sure that you're going to get the best images so that, again, when it's presented, it looks the very best that it can be. So thank you so much for, for sharing that because I think it's one of those um, overlooked pieces that, you know, and some people are, oh, that's not my job. I'm just taking pictures. But it is your job if you want to make sure that the images look as representative of the home as they can be. And I could tell you that like probably 60 to 70% of the time when I move something, they leave it. They, <laughs> they, they're like, Oh, this looks way better. We, I don't know why we ever did that. You know, it's the, they'll put an extra chair in a garage or they'll, I, I, a lot of times it's mostly like dining room tables. They have them turned the wrong way or a breakfast table turned the wrong way. And I turn it and they're like, wow, this space looks so much bigger. Mm -hmm. and, and they leave, they yeah. end up leaving. It's just because they don't, they just don't have the same eye, you yeah. know, and they're not trying to, they're not trying to show space and maybe functionality, but it's, it's, a, it's a little different. Yeah. So um, let's take a pause to answer some questions. I've seen a few uh, jump in. Tammy, have, do you have any teed up yet or? Sure, yes. So Constantine, thank you, had one. And I think his question is just asking about um, increasing your revenue year over year. So he asked, how do you add extra business 10 to 15% each year? Is it more your personal approach or do you advertise? This is a little bit different for you because of your relationship and shooting for VHT, but the right. um, answer could be similar both ways. Yes. Uh, how I've done it with, within my, within under our umbrella of VHT is, like I said before, we have different packages. So I would reduce the amount of the smaller packages. I would increase the amount of bigger packages. I would educate agents in the value of the bigger packages. And then I would track that. So I understood where that was making an impact. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the way I did it under VHT several years. And then adding services was another one. Um, uh, yeah, those are the two that under VHT's umbrella. That, that's how I did it. Yes. Um, do you do video, Mark? I do not. We're in the process of building a program within VHT, and um, I'm just kind of waiting until they they've really worked out a lot of the bugs. I will do it. I uh, I just it's just a matter of we're really close, uh, really close to releasing a consistent process and product. And once we do, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll write everybody else's coattails that put all the efforts into it. <laughs> Donald asked, how much lighting or gear do you take to a shoot? Huh. Lighting, we do bracketing, so I don't even really use a flash any longer. And uh, the dynamic range on the R5 is so wide that I, I don't really, I find it very consistent by not using a flash. I used to use the Mark IV and I used to use an on-camera flash. Uh, and, and because we're bracketing, uh, VHT does all the editing. I have no control of that consistency anyway. So uh, it, it, they, they have a good process. They were able to take care of it. Uh, equipment, I carry a 11 to 24. And again, I'm 10 years in with a very solid business model. I don't recommend 
you people make this investment because it's a very big investment. I carry a, a 17 millimeter tilt shift, a um, 50 millimeter tilt shift, and a 24 millimeter tilt shift, along with an 11 to 24 uh, cannon uh, on, a, on a Mark V mm -hmm. on top of a Arca Swiss geared head and Gitsu legs. So it's a very expensive process, but like I said, I've done 12,000 houses. Uh, it's, it's, it's the tools that, that, that don't change the imagery. It just makes the process more efficient. Yes. I can, everything I can do with this equipment, I could have done with the equipment I started out with, but it would have been a lot more work in the editing and would have been a lot more work in, in, in equipment not holding up. Mm -hmm. That's good care. And Donald, um, I actually shoot Flambian, so I bring like an 8200. I also have an 8600 just in case if, you know, it's a huge room. Um, and then most of the same other stuff that he uses, except I'm on the good side, I shoot Nikon, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, we, we won't start the war. They're all. Start a war here. We're not come on, come on. The, the country is divided enough. <laughs> Let's not bring it into this world, too. They're all great. <laughs> <laughs> They're all great cameras. Uh, Tell me, I know there's some questions from Facebook. Yes, yes. So here is one. I have a question. How do you feel like floor plans have made a difference for your agent's listings? Uh, a couple different things. One, I, th I think most homeowners, let me back it up. 3D tours, I think, was, were driven more by homeowners than agents. The homeowners liked them. Mm -hmm. The homeowners liked, they, they, they struggled with it. But I think age, home, agents that were doing it early on were, well, my homeowner wants it. So I don't really want it, but they want it. Floor plans are the same thing. I think more homeowners like seeing a floor plan on a house because it really answers a lot of questions for them as far as dimensions, how the furniture is going to fit and where things, where things go. Uh, so that that's helped a lot. The fact that, you know, my longest... Cubic Casa was on an 18,000 square foot house. It took me 21 minutes to the point where, you know, uh, the other extreme was because I don't like to talk about um, services in front of homeowners. It just puts the agent in a bad position. Yeah. I did a house yeah. a few weeks. I did a house a few weeks ago, beautiful house, unique layout. And they were waiting for me outside on a patio talking while I was inside shooting. And I didn't, and I, it was so unique. I knew that she probably would want a floor plan. I just did the floor plan. I had my equipment with me. I just did the floor plan, got in my car, texted her and said, listen, I did a floor plan. If you don't want it, I'll delete it. If you want it, I have it. I just didn't want to bring it up in front of the homeowner. It took me six minutes. And she's Thanks. like, oh, it, it, it's a great tool. Uh, I think VHT is moving towards even incorporating it as a, as a standard product on certain with certain companies and with certain price points and things like that. So I, I don't, I, I see that it's, it's a really good feature. And again, we can go back to, it's a separator. It's a separator for the agent amongst other agents. It's a separator for photographers amongst other photographers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the heels of that, how, it has Kubikasa helped your photographer experience while making the floor plans? Okay, so I think it's just um, how much easier is it to do using a Kubikasa scan mm -hmm. versus any other way that you've ever done it? Uh, this is the only way I've done it. Like I said, I did it originally on, by hand and there's no comparison. There's no comparison. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, there's arguments out there and we, you know, but for me personally, it's a service that I can provide where, again, my agent's a one-stop shop for most of the products that they want to use. Uh, I, I I wish I did drone, but in Chicago, ah, the weather, man, I, I, I just, I'm, my schedule is so tight to have to go back because we have four days of rain or three days of tornado weather or four days of, you know, below, you know, 40 below wind chills. You know, it's, to me, I just can't see how it's a real efficient thing for me personally. We have great drone operators that work for with us and for us at VHT, but it's just it, to me, it's it's a business nightmare of trying to 
to be, con- I, I love consistency. I don't want to have to go back to a house just for the drone shots. So that's been my big sticking point with me as far as drone is a consistency thing. But if it wasn't for that, I would, I would definitely include that also. I mm-hmm. want to be a one-stop shop to my agents that want. I have some agents that will never do floor plan. I have some agents that will never do a 3D tour. I have some agents that only do images or does, does all of them every time. But I want to be able to service them however yes. they want to be. Yes. Yeah, and, you, you know, there are like 28 airports in Chicagoland, so sometimes <laughs> FAA clearance can be tough, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, Sam asked, um, will VHT be attending PMRE this year, and will he see you there? Sam Poole. They are. They are attending. I will not be there this year. I've been there every one they've had, but I, I'm not going this year. Uh it's just it's it's a little tough it's a little uh not tougher it's just uh i just won't be able to make it this year i'm going to be in sweden in august and i got some other stuff going on so this uh pfr pmre is uh not on the schedule for this year maybe you'll get to you know catch sam over the pond man. <laughs> catch him in sweden <laughs> yeah so can you uh take a step back somebody ask uh how you dress when you shoot there, come on. show them like your uh like you see, <laughs> I wear a vest every day, dress pants, dress shirt. Uh, and to me, it's, I, t- I tear stuff, I stain stuff. I, my shoes are pretty much disposable uh, because, you know, we're in snow and mud and everything else. Uh, but to me, it's just as easy. Do you still have the camera shoes? <laughs> yeah, I do. The photography shoes, I do have those. I say photography on them. Um, yeah yeah no it's uh you know quite honestly it's just as easy for me and and now it becomes like a a branding thing like if i have one shoot on a saturday i get dressed up and it drives me nuts you know but it's 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 just kind of it's a comfort level too at this point yeah you know it's funny because i had an agent we had a couple summers ago i get to the shoot it's like 105 with humidity plus humidity on top of that and he shows up in shorts and teacher goes, man, he says, and I show up just like this. He goes, dude, you can, you can, you know, occasionally you can wear shorts and a t-shirt. It's not a big deal. And right away I thought, I, I have no, you know, I can't assume what the homeowner's like, you know, I can't assume, you know, that they're going to be understanding, not that they have any expectation, but I don't know what kind of impact it's going to have on that homeowner. So what I did was I came home that day and I, in front of my own house, took a picture of me posing with the way I'm dressed. And then I went inside, threw on some shorts and a t-shirt and I took another picture and I posted it. I said, does this make a difference to you? Now I'm all covered in tattoos. So (laughs) my legs, my arms all have tattoos. I'm like, does this make a difference to you? Do you see the, do you have a different version vision of this person shooting in your house? So to me it does. And I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. It's just the reality. You know, if somebody sees somebody dressed like me standing in front of their house, a neighbor or something, they're not going to, they're not going to think, you know, anything. They're going to, they're going to be curious. If you have some guy standing in front of their house, taking pictures of it all covered in tattoos, you might have a different opinion. Uh, I don't know. That's just a personal, that's just a personal mindset. That being said, the way I dressed, I've had the cops called on me four times. So <laughs> <laughs> that goes into a totally different issue. Yeah, so yeah. that is, yeah. <laughs> I've been there too. So, <laughs> um, another question from Alicia: If you were to invest in your first tilt shift lens, which one would you buy, and would you buy used? I would definitely buy used. Just make sure the mechanicals, you know, like anything else, make sure it obviously looks like it's in decent shape. I would definitely buy used, and honestly, I would say the best thing to do is to start with a 17 because you can jump into a, uh, you can buy an extender, a 1.4 extender, and you can put that on the tilt shift. That gives you, now you have the ability to have a 24. And if you go to a two time extender also, and those cost you around 400 bucks, 300 bucks, but you can buy those used also. You can get one of those for a couple hundred bucks. Now you're into the cost of the tilt shift. A couple extenders starts to give you an idea whether you're going to start to use those tilt shifts regularly and how you'll use them. Uh, as you can, I use my 24 probably a lot more than my 17 now because I carry all of them. Uh, 
I don't use the extenders as much. Uh, I do use the, the probably the 1.4 on the 24. If I have that weird sweet spot that I, it's, you know, the 50 is too tight. 24, I want it to be a little bit tighter. I want to stand a bit further back, so I'll throw the extender on that. So I would say the 17 and then throwing on some extenders to start. The extenders you can usually get used. Um, look online, B&H, Adorama, ProCam. Mm -hmm. Tell me, have you started using your tilt shift? Nope. It's um, in its little um, coffin along with the drone. But, you know, <laughs> one day, one day those things will get out. Uh, really questions i know we're approaching our time go ahead mark the, the one thing i was going to say is that uh if you're not sure about a tilt shift and you don't want to make that investment there's a lot of places you could rent them rent one for a weekend and play with it because everybody's got this mentality that they're so difficult and time consuming to use i'm only really shifting up and down everything else is locked i'm not tilting it so it's you're really you're throwing it on and you're just shifting one button up and down that's all you're doing uh, it's just, you know, if you, to me, I like the consistency that I don't have to rely on the editors. Hey, you know, fix the perspective and then hope that they don't crop it down too far and all this other stuff. I could just, I know what I'm going to have. And, and it also came out of when I was reviewing every image with the homeowners afterwards, they knew exactly what they were going to be seeing. You didn't have to say, oh, when they fix this, it's going to look like that. I, I was just going to say, Mark, I bet your editors love you because basically all they have to do is, is merge. Like mm -hmm. you already have everything corrected and that's kind of amazing. Anything else, Tammy? I know we're fast approaching our um, timeline. Um, a couple people just, I'll just mention, have asked if we're recording this and yes, it has been recorded and we will have it posted to our YouTube channel as soon as possible. Um, and I think most other things, well, I'll, we have a couple minutes, so I'll ask one more. Carr asked if you have noticed any less demand for the 360s and for the 3D tours since maybe the beginning of the pandemic, which yeah. it's different. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt I've, I've noticed less of a demand, but I think... Uh, I think what's happening is it's becoming more of a tool of separation from the agents. The agents, even it's not as much of a necessity because we don't have the pandemic, but they are using it to separate themselves from other agents. So I don't think it's going to go away completely. I just think it's going to be a different marketing tool. Yes. Yes, I agree. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, Mark, for your time. Um, I'm going to, um, put this last screen up so that people can see your information and um, if they have any additional questions, because the last question I wanna to post to you is what's next for Mark Gutierrez? Cause I know you're planning some really cool things. So if you wanna um, share a little bit of what you're doing. Well, um, I'm, I'm really creating another level of uh, uh, business model or whatever you would like to call it to do more speakings. Uh, more office visits, more education to uh, agents, more education to photographers, not necessarily how to shoot, but more to how do we build a business? How do we build a brand? How do we raise the bar? I talk with students at schools, uh, high school students, college students, um, that this is a real viable industry, that you, but you better treat it like a business. And, you know, agents need to hear that. And so do photographers, you know. So I'm really kind of, I want to do more speaking engagements. I want to do more things like, uh, you know, maybe NAR at some point, maybe regional uh, brokerage uh, uh, meetings and things like that. Uh, I do office visits. I do a lot of, uh, I do more and more webinars and podcasts. And uh, so I'm, I'm really building a, a whole nother avenue for this stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mark. It's been very informative. Um, great conversation that I believe really helped a lot of people. Um, and we're excited to, to know you, to have you as a, a friend in business. And um, Sam says, come to Finland. So you got to work it in. But Finland, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you no, so thanks. much for your time. We greatly appreciate you and look forward uh, to the next time where we can, uh, can chat and uh, look forward to seeing what you're going to be doing uh, as you keep going forward. 
Yep. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I love the, I love the platform. I love the product, obviously. And, uh, uh, and, and you guys are doing a killer job getting out there and spreading the word and doing great stuff on social media and getting people involved and excited in, in a time when there's a lot of uncertainty and where we're going with the market and just, you guys are staying positive and doing a lot of really cool things. And that's all we can do, man. When we're losing hope, we got to be the hope. So. Awesome. And, and while you said that, thank you so much to our marketing team, Anastasia, Nawate, Blowin, uh, missing Elena. Elena, so many that um, do the work behind the scenes, but we thank you guys um, for your contributions and for working so hard and to the entire Kubi Casa team. And again, thank you all for joining. Um, look for the recording by tomorrow, and we will talk to you next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you so Take much, care, everyone. Guys.